how do you survive? Survival is an art, so I think that you survive by not carrying your scars, but carrying your glory. Everybody reinvents themselves continually and constantly. My first inspiration was my brother John, who was seven years older, who worked in the underground against Hitler and allowed me in on some of the adventures when I was 13 years old. Losing him was the greatest sorrow of my life. My brother John was my hero. He was killed by the Nazis. So to honor him, I have dedicated my life to do the kind of things that I have passion for. Civil rights, human rights, women's rights, children's rights. Ride was born from a dream. My brother and I, we had this desire to create a better world. And we called it We Day with tens of thousands of young people in attendance, hundreds of thousands watching online and millions watching on TV. I know we all have some weaknesses, but it does not mean that we don't deserve to be special. Hi, my name is Craig Kilberger. I'm the co-founder of Free the Children and the wonderful Eva Haller served on our board for 15 years and chair for over a decade. I first met Eva when I was literally falling asleep on her couch. She was giving advice and guidance to a then 14 year old boy who had just started a children's charity. And I kept saying, I'm absorbing, I'm absorbing, even as I was falling asleep. And I've been absorbing ever since. When I look at the people I've met who have inspired me, I've had the chance to meet popes and presidents and queens, but there is no one in this world who has taught me more about what it means to change this world and to do it with love and with grace than Eva Haller. I first met Eva in 1995 at uh, President Gorbachev's State of the World Forum. She was indefatigable. And she came to the villages of our Takari program, that's community centered conservation. She laughed and joked with the village women. At one point, she was dancing with them. Uh, she came to visit the coffee project and our Roots and Shoots program. And then Ava did us the great honor of being on the Jane Goodall Institute board for quite a good many years with her wise comments and suggestions. I met Eva the night that we launched the New York campus, and the social mission of the New York campus is to use fashion and the business of apparel as an instrument for sustainable development. Fashion is a $2.5 trillion industry, 80% women in the supply chain, 80% of all fabric and textiles hits landfill, and we are the second highest user of water in the world. This was a challenge put up to us by our chancellor, Professor Mohammed Yunus, a good friend of Eva's, who asked me how can we use the business to actually change the world. We are now working with 30 CEOs representing $200 billion in apparel business, very much guided by Eva's vision of things, by her connections to the world. She weaves the forces of good together like nobody else I've ever seen in the world, believing the more that she unites the forces of good, the more we can all help each other. And that's quite a miracle. I love to get involved in projects that are not yet formed. I love to incubate. I love to envision what an organization will be when it gets started or when it grows. There was this young woman who started an organization with her friend called Sing for Hope. The Sing for Hope pianos transform New York City. For two weeks in the summer, there are these hot spots that are bringing people and communities to life. The theme of Sing for Hope is art for all. It's about connecting people with the creative spirit that's inside all of us. And that's what these pianos do on a massive scale. Ava is a hero because she's an instigator. I've never met anybody who is able to capture the core 
and the spirit of someone so brilliantly and then support that to come to fruition. She's done that with Sing for Hope, she's done that with so many other organizations and she does it with an incredible kind of patience and love that is very rare. I was 14, 15 and I, I was Hungarian, I lived in Budapest, I, 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 I belonged there and suddenly I was told that I have to wear a five inch yellow star on my clothing without which I'm not allowed out of the house and if I didn't wear it they would arrest me or send me to, to a camp or whatever. Well I just didn't think that I should wear anything other than the Hungarian flag but if Hungarian flag doesn't want me then I just don't want to have any flag but I'm not going to wear a star. Then when they came to, to get us and rounded us up, I said to the young officer who was doing the rounding up, I'm not going with you. I'm much too young and beautiful to die. And he actually took a step back, not a big one, just a little one. He said, OK, then run. I was looking for a place where I belong. My best friends were killed. My home was taken away from me. This is the day I left uh, Budapest, Hungary, December of 1948. It was the time when things were really very, very tough. You couldn't get out of Hungary. A very dear friend of mine worked in the passport office, and he said, I think I could get you a passport. So he did, and I left Hungary. You were not allowed to take out either jewelry or money from the country. So mother thought I would be hungry when I get there. So I had a nice Hungarian salami. I had some bread. I had some change of clothes. And one way to get out of Hungary to Paris. The words from this piece were actually written on the walls of a concentration camp. What resonates throughout it is a sense of hope. What gratifies us? What is gratification? What makes us want to live? And what makes us joyous? For me, giving is taking. The ability to be grateful because we have something that we can give. And by doing that very act of giving, the satisfaction, the joy that comes from having done so is in my mind where, where the very word of taking comes in. There's a lot of energy that one uses in life, in survival, to compete, to measure oneself against others. But it comes an age where you no longer have a need to compete and to achieve the way you have had to do for survival or self-respect when you were younger. At our age, it is sort of like uh, a joy of watching others achieve. It is the joy of watching others to grow. We are a little drop in the ocean, and that we really don't accomplish very much, no matter how much we think we are doing. We are not doing that much. But if we keep on connecting people to people with similar interests, the same interests, the same energy, uh, we are creating many, many drops. We are creating waves. <laughs>